April 20th, 2021. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Public comment. Any public comment today? See any? No public comment. <clears throat> okay. Do we have a chance to review the uh, minutes? Mm -hmm. No additions or corrections. Is that, is that a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the written. Second. Second, Second by Commissioner Quinn. All in favor, second of August, saying aye. 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 Commissioner comments and committee reports. I don't have anything. Uh, I don't have anything. Uh, I don't think I have any this week. Okay. Um, EMS commission report for March 2021. Um, <laughs> it's basically a receive and file. I just wanted to make a couple comments. Um, I, I would just look at how quickly people, they're able to uh, serve uh, people within the community. And of the instances they had in March, 125 of them were the Atchison City, and then it falls clear down to 12 in the County East, and eight in Effingham, seven in County West, zero in Lancaster, zero in Muscota, and two out of County. So most of it is done in the city of Atchison which is probably not a surprise, but they do a great job and I'm glad we have them. So we'll receive and file at this point. New business before the board. Kim Pruitt. I, I just want to make a comment. Um, I think that the Kim Pruitt, are you on? I don't think she's actually on. I okay. think she's dispatching today. Okay, I have a purchase order for joint communications. It's the monthly fee for the Mid-America Regional Council uh, who, who host our um, 911 and our joint communications. It's for $5,133.77. The chair would entertain a motion to approve this purchase order. So moved. So moved by Commissioner Quinn. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Knoll. All in favor signal five by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Passes three to zero. Um, Okay, Northeast Kansas Environmental Services. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is basically our yearly review of uh, 2020 activities and to kind of formally introduce ourselves to the new commissioner. I know Commissioner Bauer and Commissioner Knoll were familiar with you as, as well as Councillor Henderson. So I'd like to introduce myself as Martha Smith. I'm the office manager of Northeast Kansas Environmental Services. Excuse me a minute, can you turn your volume up just a little bit? I hope so. Hold on, I don't know how to do that. Can I find a 12 year old that can help you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let me see. I'll have Logan go ahead if, and I'll work on that. I'm Logan with Northeast Kansas Environmental Services and I'm the environmental health specialist. You're loud and clear, Logan. We're turning up the TV a little bit, so. Hey, you guys go ahead. While I'm doing this, I did email a copy of our report to you. I, do you or do you not have that in front of you? I don't know how much of this to go through with you. Yes, we have yes, it. We do. Okay, can you hear me any better? I've, I still haven't found my volume. Yeah, you've, you're coming in clear now. Okay. I've set up and I'm speaking a little, little louder. So basically this is the same kind of report that we've done the last few years and it's gonna be new to Commissioner Quinn. And uh, so starting off there, we had 23 new permit applications in 2020, which was down eight from 2019. And that's basically either 
people building a home needing a new wastewater service or a current wastewater service that's failed and needing to upgrade their current wastewater service. So we had 23 new permits in 2020. Uh, we had 23 completed systems. That basically means that we had a final use permit submitted, sent to the homeowner after the, the wastewater system is completed. That means if it's a lagoon, there was a fence properly built around it, uh, a septic system with a drawing submitted to our office and approved. So we had 23 of those completed in 2020. Some of those were new permits in 2020, as well as prior years permit applications. So that's where that number comes from. We had nine property resale system, resale evaluations. That means if you're selling your property to somebody, they call us to have us check the wastewater system before the sale could complete. And so we had nine of those in 2020, which was up from six in 2019. And we didn't have any well checks in 2020. Um, we don't usually check too many wells in, in Atchison County. So that number is not a surprising number at all. So uh, we did have one in 2019, as you can see there. And I'll, I'll let Logan kind of speak to the ne next four issues there, because he was the one that um, I would receive the phone call of these complaints, and then I would send him out to check on them. So I'll let him speak to these next four situations. Um, so the property off Pratt Road, um, seems like that one kind of been, they're more or less, there's three or four mobile homes on that site. Uh, I think they're either rentals and I think the owner of those, it, she lives back in there. I remember, um, checking that property with Dennis, um, a couple years back, but, uh, more or less, they're just, we keep sending letters, um about cleaning up them mobile homes and getting them removed um nothing's really gotten uh, resolved there if anything i think they've added another camper since then um to that property um, the original phone call from us to add to a little bit of history there has been some history at this location due to the number of trailers there but someone had called and reported quote unquote deplorable living conditions well, we don't really tell people how they can or can't live, but we have been trying to get this location cleaned up and it is on the list of Atchison County complaints. So hopefully we'll get some movement on that property, pressure them to get those mobile homes cleaned up. And, you know, we both mostly went for, you know, the environmental issue. You know, we can't tell people how they can or can't live. And so we went for the environmental purposes, looking for wastewater issues or trash or, you know, that sort of thing. That was mostly Logan's mission on that complaint received at our office. But like I said, you know, we will work on hopefully getting that one cleaned up since it is on the complaint list. And then the, the Potter complaint, uh, more or less, I think that one's a kind of a, a tricky one. Um, more or less, there's a property at the top of the hill that whenever we get a lot of rain and whatnot, his sewer drains into the neighboring property who's downhill and it puddled up in that guy's yard, I think last year. Um, and then when I went to go check out that property um, and I dropped uh, dye tablets down it, it sounded like that owner had his tank pumped right before I got there. So kind of playing a cat and mouse game um, on that property. Um, but so far, I don't think anything's uh, come up this year um, in regard to that property. But um, after he pumped that tank, it, sound, it everything dried up all of a sudden. So um, I think those were the, the uh, Potter complaints. And then the one on Country Club Road, um, they had abandoned uh, mobile homes on that one, but those have been uh, removed from that property and everything's been cleaned up and now it's just a, an empty lot. Um, so finally got that one uh, taken care of. And Logan, the one prior to that on Clay Street, you know, the, the one where the 
where they have the road and bridge department involved in that one as well. 8258, 8272 Clay Street. Do you remember that one? That was it last August. Nah, not top of my head, no. <laughs> Supposedly, these are a couple of rental properties, and the owner called us up to after the there was a complaint submitted to KDHE. The owner called me up and said, yes, there was a dispute between the owner and the person that had moved out that was renting there. The person that rented was claiming that there was wastewater in the backyard. According to the owner, they've been in contact with engineers with your county and the uh, bridge department due to road drainage issues. There is water that runs off of the road onto these properties that basically causes the laterals to overfill and get, make it appear as though the wastewater systems are failing, but it's not due to wastewater issues. It's due to a road drainage problem. So. We've not visited with her since last August or September, but she was supposedly in the active process with the road and bridge department to try and get that drainage along that road in that area cleaned up. It's my understanding that's in the Fremont Road and Clay, Clay Street area, is that right? I've not been past that area personally. Logan, do you remember? Is that the one right across from the golf course? Uh, I feel like- By John Deere? Yeah. West of on the 286. Oh, okay. I got you now. Um, yeah, I met with that lady last year. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, water comes down off that hill and then it goes over the over Clay Street and then it goes down into um, her property backyard. And then um, that water just sits there in pools, it's got nowhere to drain and um, neighbors have kind of taken matters in their own hand and started building building up berms and building their properties up to try to shed that water. And now it's everything, it's going all draining back into her yard and that water, um, seeing some of the pictures and whatnot, uh, that water gets pretty high up into their backyard, um, which would then put a lot of a lot of unnecessary um, pressure onto their septic system. Um, so, I mean, there's there's a lot of drainage issue um, on that property in that in that development area. Um, yeah, there's a lot of drainage issues. So that was kind of a wastewater related complaint, but it's not all due to you know it's not necessarily a wastewater issue. It's a drainage issue off of that yeah. road. So I'm not sure right. of the road and bridge or engineers. She was in conversation with county experts to try and get that location fixed to some degree. And I'm, I haven't been in communication with her since then. So, so do you guys have any questions about any of those things that are on the list here? Um, I just have a couple questions. So when, can you walk me through the process of the nuisance complaint on your end? So when, my, when I get a complaint, I usually let Mr. Henderson know, and then we notify you guys. Um, and then what's the process for you? A Logan goes out. Do you talk to the owners, Logan, or just take photos and then send a letter or just kind of better take, understand what that looks like? Yeah. So I go out, I go by the property, I take photos. Um, and then I put it back into a report. Martha sends them out a letter and then we kind of go from there. Um, we had a conversation with Mr. Henderson last week about uh, streamlining our process because we would send a letter to them giving them X amount of days, usually 30 to 45 days, depending on the degree of, uh, you know, to the degree that the situation was. And uh, we've decided now that we're going to send them a letter, give them the opportunity to call in and call our office and say, yes, we know there's an issue, you know, we're working on it, or I don't know what you're talking about, that kind of a thing. That's going to be our new mode is instead of giving them 30 or 45 days and then allowing them to, you know, drag their feet and keep going on. If they're not going to do anything, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Henderson for prosecution and bring them before a, before a judge.
So you'll send them, you'll send them a, a certified letter that they'll receive and then they need to reach out to you. Otherwise it goes into the courts um, from there. It doesn't even give them the 30 to 45 day window. That's my understanding with Mr. Henderson, because, you know, we've been giving them, you know, X amount of time, but um, it doesn't seem to do any good. You know, we don't, we don't have the teeth, you know, the legal pressure to put on them to, to force them to do it. And most of the time when we send it to them, they just drag their feet and it doesn't really go anywhere. So correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Henderson, you know, if that's, that was the way we left the meeting last week. And, you know, if you guys are okay with that, then that's how we're going to proceed with the rest of these complaints. No, I, I think that's right. I think okay. that's right. And um, also we were getting, you, where you were giving 45 days, for example, a lot of times we weren't seeing any response until day 41 when they call and say, gosh, I need more time to do it because I only have three days now to get it fixed. And so we're trying to get some interaction at an earlier time is really the goal and not, not giving really long deadlines, but making clear that we want some feedback and we're willing to work with people that are willing to work with us. Right. And yes, it will be a certified letter that I send to them. That way we know that they did receive it. Um, it's been my history in the past to send a certified letter as well as a just a regular postal postmarked type letter because if they if it just sits in the post in the box refused, then the, the postal service would send it back to us, not necessarily the regular marked uh, postal letter. But the certified letter, you know, I'll always get that back that, you know, that it was either refused or not at this address. Address That way, I at least know from the Postal Service whether or not it's a good address or, you know, the potential for receiving either or letter would be taken by the individual that addressed to it. And how many do we currently have on the complaint list? for this year, 2021? I've not looked at the, at the list recently. Um, I know we've been working on, there's about four properties that we're kind of actively working on we didn't want to undertake too many at a time and just kind of let them get lost in the weeds. And so, um, you know, given, you know, five property owners, 45 days to get their stuff cleaned up and then, you know, so-and-so calls, you know, give me an extension. And, you know, that was kind of the way that we were doing it in the past with this new way. I don't have a problem going out, taking fresh pictures of the, of the properties on the list, sending them all a letter, contact me, you know, let's get let's get moving on all of them. Mr. Henderson said he'd rather have 10 of them in court at one time than, you know, just one today and one next week, you know, dragging it out in that way. So I'm hoping this new procedure will expedite our process and, you know, we'll be able to work on 14 at a time rather than four at a time or, you know, whatever the number is. Right. Any other questions? Okay, thanks for the information. Thanks for what you guys are doing for us. That's no problem. We really appreciate it. You, you're kind of hidden behind the curtain, so to speak, but <laughs> you do a big service. So. Yeah, and that's, you know, we prefer to be behind the curtain, you know, making things happen without a lot of laud and, you know, making the paper. I mean, we like it when we get success stories like the country club property, you know, where it gets cleaned up and, you know, we like, we like for that to be in the paper, you know, we just don't like to be drugged through the newspaper and, you know, being the bad guy. And we know it's a terrible issue in Atchison County. I was on a four wheel ride this weekend and went down a particular road that I have the feeling is on the list. And um, I just shook my head the whole way down through there going, my gosh, I can't believe people can allow, you know, that this, that people think that this is okay. So, um, I mean, it was, it was definitely an eyesore. So we're, hoping to get, get some results from you guys, for you guys, and, you know, push forward and get your county cleaned up for you. Help get your county cleaned up anyway. Thank you. 
And one last thing really quickly on our 2021 goals, uh, we are, you know, hopefully working toward getting your uh, env environmental and sanitation codes upgraded, updated. Um, I sent those to you last week. I think I heard back from all three of you. I believe that you all at least received them and acknowledged that you had received them. So as soon as we hear back from you guys that you want us to proceed, then we'll have your little county uh, get together with a group of individuals and um, since COVID has not ceased, but at least died down and people are getting vaccinated to the point we should be able to get a group of pe people together who are comfortable enough to meet and discuss the ch proposed changes and hopefully get those to KDHE soon. But I would like to hear from you guys when you get a chance to look through them and say, yes, proceed with the committee meeting and then we'll go from there. What's that? I think it was proposed two different ways. Are we to propose the people that's going to be on that uh, board? I actually have a list of people that Mr. Henderson was kind of compiling. Okay. I will contact them so our so we can get a hold of them and set up a scheduled time. So um, I was going to go by that list that Mr. Henderson gave me. Okay. Oh gosh, probably a well, it was a little over a year ago. It was right after last year's uh, meeting in March that we met with you guys. So. Then COVID hit and I wasn't able to get together with any of them. So as soon as I hear from you guys that you're okay with the proposed changes, then we'll, our, any KES will get that group together and uh, give the same proposed changes to this group to get their input. And then, uh, then we'll send them on to KDHE to peruse and get their um, white out and red check marks out after us. <laughs> And then as far as the document with the various colors are of the changes, do those mean anything based on the colors? Or I know some are the pink or the turquoise, or it doesn't matter what the color is. You you guys had went through and altered those or yes, some of them are terminology changes. And I I haven't looked at that since I sent it to you guys, Casey, to uh to refresh my memory, but some of them are terminology cases, terminology changes that KDHE wants us to make, like um, change the definition of a septic system to a waste underground waste, private waste, on-site wastewater system or something to that degree. So there are, there are terminology changes. There are changes that include additional um, proposed codes, including, but not limited to, including requiring wastewater systems, all wastewater systems to be checked during a real estate property transaction. You know, if if I'm selling my property to you, I would be required to have my wastewater system checked by any Northeast Kansas Environmental Services before that closing to mimic what Jackson County is doing because that's working super well in Jackson County. And so um, I believe we're adding the nuisance part of the code and I believe there, we're also adding a well or a, a private water uh, section to the code to mimic our other uh, county codes as well. We're just trying to get the five counties that we cover to be real similar to each other as far as things that are required and um, things that, you know, to get a little bit more uniformity throughout our five counties. So that's basically what the colors indicate is either additions to the code, terminology changes, or um, additional terms, because your code is a pretty basic code. You know, there's not a lot of, and we're not trying to muddy up the waters or anything. We're just trying to make things a little more clear and uh, a little more uniform with our other counties. Okay, and that just triggered my mind. Um, I had a gal ask me about the fee for the real estate um, when you're performing that service. Is uh -huh. it is it higher in Atchison County than surrounding counties? No, as far as our five counties go, it's all the same. Okay, it's all the it's all the same for all five of our counties, no matter if you're in Donovan, Jackson, or otherwise. Okay. So, and the reason why we have it that way is because during these real estate property transactions, we do find a lot of failed wastewater systems that need upgrades to it. So rather than going back and saying, okay, you need, you owe us X amount of dollars for the, for the evaluation of the system, but then you also owe us another 50 or a hundred dollars to upgrade your system. We're just making it all the same per cost. So one, one money will do the whole thing. And okay. it's out very well in Jackson County and well, any that it applies to. Okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Any other questions or concerns? I have none. No, Eric keeps us pretty much up to date too. Oh, I try. <laughs> he tries. <laughs> he tries. Well, we appreciate your support and you know we're doing the what we can i know this these complaints are going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort by us and you know mr henderson you know putting them in front of a judge so hopefully we'll be able to get a bunch of these knocked out in 2021 and it's not really a um uh, it's kind of a it's an effort that we're working towards you know trying to get these knocked out the best we can so um in addition to our other duties in our other counties Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. We appreciate your support. Have a good day. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Joe Schneider. Departmental approvals. Good afternoon. Uh, I have a purchase order for WeMac Manufacturing, <coughs> 750 gallon tank on mounted on a trailer in the amount of $7,695 for us to transport oil back and forth from Kansas City for the dirt patcher. Chair, we entertain a motion to approve a purchase over WeMac Manufacturing for $7,695 for a, a trailer. Sorry. Moved by Commissioner Knoll. Second. Second by Commissioner Quinn. Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. And I would just say that we're purchasing this to cut down on the trips back and forth to get oil for our Dura Patcher. Yes. And yes. the Dura Patcher is definitely uh, an investment in the county and people are noticing. So that's, that's exciting. Moving forward, I hope. So uh, I have another purchase order for the Foster Ford for $40,430, the purchase of a 2022 F550. Okay. The chairman entertained a motion to approve a purchase order of a foster Ford for $40,430. So moved. It's been moved by Commissioner Quinn, second, second by Commissioner Knoll. Discussion. Do I just don't remember? Are we going to buy this outright? Or are we going to lease? Yes, and I, I forgot to tell you guys that this morning. In the special machinery, we have $178,000 and uh, we have the funding to pay for it, the bed, and also the oil tank we just were just purchased. And that'll leave us, I think, around $116,000. Last year, we put our uh, refund or our uh, reimbursement into that fund. This year, we put our reimbursement into the special bridge. So that's that's where that's at. And I like to keep that uh, special machinery around 100,000 when we get done. That way, if we have a, an emergency or something, we've got some, some funds to work with on, on any equipment. All in favor, simply follow by saying aye. Aye. Aye, passes through. Okay, Joe, moving right along. Uh, the bed for the 550 with American Equipment for $14,317. The uh, original bid was $13,298. And then the upgrade for the floor uh, from 10 gauge to seven would be $184. And then the strobe lights for the safety issue would be an additional 835, which totals again, $14,317. Chair, we entertain a motion to approve a purchase order for American Equipment Company uh, for $14,317. So moved. It's been moved by Commissioner Knoll. Second. Second by Commissioner Quinn. Discussion? Hearing none, I assume you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay. One more, Joe. I've got the purchase order <clears throat> for the boring for bridge 520, bridge F.0124 and bridge H1134 for geology with Terracon, LNX of Kansas, uh, $5,900 for each times three would be $17,700. Okay. Chair, entertain a, a motion to approve Terracon 
for borrowing for $17,700. Do I have a motion? Moved by Commissioner Quinn, seconded by Commissioner Noll. Discussion? And it's it's for the geology for the uh, reports for the bridges, the new bridges to make sure I get that in there. They drill down and if they hit something or if they don't, they they uh, send the results to to us so we know what's what's underneath there. Hopefully no more big rock. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Would you? aye. Oh, aye. Okay. Raise your hand. I thought maybe you had more to say. Right. Uh, okay, uh, I have a, a letter in support of the Ashton County Community Schools. Uh, do you want to discuss? Jack. I'm sorry. I hate I hate to interrupt, but the change order for the bridge for fourteen thousand six hundred for the additional. I don't have that in front of me. It, let, let me get it from Michelle. Okay? And that's, that's I apologize. Hard. I thought we were done. So no, it's just the change order, and this was a question I had. Uh, we did the change order last week, but we didn't actually do POs, and I wanted to know how we're actually supposed to to handle that. Mr. If, Henderson, if somebody can explain that to me. Well, as long as it's authorized, I the the change order. I guess either way should be fine. I mean, they do different things. The change order explains the scope of what their what the new work is, and the purchase order takes care of the finances. So, uh, are making payments. So maybe it's both. All right. So then, do we need to send POs for last week and and this one this week? If, if you're wanting a check. If well, they're not wanting it. They're not wanting a check right now. I don't believe. Yeah, they haven't asked. No, you wouldn't send a purchase order until we need the check. Okay. All right. Just yeah. want to make sure we're doing it the way we should. Okay. So the chair would entertain a motion to approve a change order for Norfolk Contracting Inc. for $14,600 to be signed by the chairman. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. The second. It's, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes. Three to zero. Okay, Thank you, all. Joe. No, no, for sure don't. Thank you all, and uh, have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a letter of support for Atchison County Community Schools. You want to cover this, uh, Commissioner Quinn? Uh, you, no, you can go ahead. Um, it's just to, no. yeah, it's to support them for their multi-purpose room addition. Um, the Atchison County Board of Commissioners supports the mission of Atchison County Community Schools Education Foundation Board of the Community Service Tax Credit Program. Um, the Atchison County Community Schools have been a positive addition to our community for a very long time. It's very welcoming to hear that they are striving to reach their goal to build a multi-purpose room addition to the junior senior high. This facility will be used to provide the schools and community a place to enhance education, training, and safety. The addition of the FEMA certified area is to be used not only by the schools, but the community as a whole, and will be a huge benefit and asset to the community. The safety of the students and faculty is of extreme importance. However, with visualized offerings of using the facility for community uses, benefiting surrounding areas during emergent times will be invaluable. It is vital for our Atchison County Community Schools Education Foundation Board to sustain and remain a strong resource for the overall wellness of our community youth. Atchison County will continue to support the continued success of the Atchison County Community Schools Education Foundation Board. So we will definitely um, support their mission and sign a letter of support for them. So you, you made a, that's a motion. Yeah, so moved. Okay, so and we'll you, go, and do you have a second? I'll we'll second it. Second it. Discussion. It's uh, I think a very well, uh, very good purpose uh, multi county multi purpose room. Uh, I've been uh, donating to it, and uh, it's been ongoing for a couple of years. And I think it's a very good cause. <clears throat> All in favor, say good father saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. Okay. Discussion of Cape Camp appraisals for Courthouse and Memorial Hall. 
Is that you, Pat? No. It's, uh, it was just a, I saw an email from Kate. So. I think they just were wanting direction on. The well, last property appraisals were conducted in 2017. So to ensure your buildings and contents are covered. Um, and the locations. When a replacement value or um, uh, how, uh, on the how we were going to figure whether we were going to get replacement value or the to rebuild for a historic reproduction. Right. Yeah, reproduction. Um, Nick Benson is who was here and he did the appraisals for all of the county buildings. He um, sent an email reaching out to say thanks again for coordinating the visit. Wanted to ask about the interest of reproduction cost valuation for both the county courthouse and Memorial Hall. In 2017, both of these locations had a reproduction cost value performed, and he, he's attached um, our member notification letter that outlines the difference in a replacement versus reproduction um, cost scenario. So I can get that. That letter would have been emailed. Let me find it. Did it indicate what we currently are doing? We did, his email indicated that. Remember we had quite a conversation. We had a reproduction cost valuation. Which I think the reproduction basically is at no cost. Well, obviously this courthouse probably costs less than 10,000 to build. It would cost probably many millions to reproduce. Let me just send this on to you guys again. Let's pull it up. It looks like two years ago, we did a reproduction cost valuation, which is um, there is a charge of $300. Um, basically, if it is a replacement cost, they use like materials um, of like kind and quality without deduction for depreciation. Um, the reproduction would be um, using materials of the like and kind and quality of the historical content. Basically, that was used in the original construction. Because we probably more than likely have a higher appraised value. So, what action do we need to take to do the reproduction cost? I think basically all you need to do is just probably vote on it. And then um, I can go ahead and let Nick know the results of what you guys wanted to do. Okay. Everybody have an appetite for that? I think for three hundred dollars, the reproduction cost for Memorial Hall in the courthouse—that's nothing. I know that's why. Yeah, yeah. I I agree. So that's what we decided a lot. So I just want yeah. to make yes. sure uh, everybody had that. So the, the chair entertained a motion to have K Camp insurance for the reproduction value of Memorial Hall and um, the county courthouse. Mm -hmm. Moved by Commissioner Noel, second, second by Commissioner Flynn. Discussion? All the favor said the by saying aye. 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 Passes through to zero. Okay, any old or unfinished business before the board? I don't have any today. Uh, County Councilor updates. 
Um, in the last week, uh, Eric and I went to the city of Lancaster and met with the city council there. Um, and then yesterday, uh, Eric had a conflict, so I went by myself to the city of Huron, uh, city council, and talked with them um, about neighborhood revitalization. Uh, the city of Lancaster was somewhat more tepid. They're, they're not part of the, uh, the current agreement. Uh, it, I did have some, some discussions actually after the meeting that suggested that they may be interested in being part of it moving forward. Uh, and uh, in here, they seemed, uh, seemed interested in renewing, although they haven't had very many projects uh, take advantage of the rehabilitation, uh, neighborhood revitalization programs. Um, we had a uh, court on one of the nuisance cases on Ottawa Road this past week, and there was a, a sentencing that was done. Um, really just mentioning it, we, we talked about it earlier in the meeting, and I expect to see maybe a little more action on those than we had. Well, we haven't had any in the last year, so. Um, so I guess any was more than that. But anyway, we, we may, I expect we'll have some more of those cases filed in the next few months. And then probably last but not least, the, uh, the tax sale is tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. at Memorial Hall. Um, if uh, we have about 50 registered uh, people registered to bid and I think there are 45 properties that are uh, unredeemed and set to be sold at the auction tomorrow. I would encourage anybody that's interested in bidding on property to go to the county's website and register. Look for tax sale, and there's a, a link in there to register online. Um, we will accept some registrations tomorrow at the sale, but it takes a little time because every person that registers, they have to check to make sure that they don't owe any taxes, and uh, that's not immediate. And so um, we'll, we'll certainly process any that come in, but uh, we're not going to delay the sale. If we have a, a rush of people, we're, the sale's going to start at 10, and if, the, if they're not vetted, um, they might not be able to get on the first several properties. As they come in. So, um, if there are any questions about the tax sale, I, I want to also I want to thank uh, Connie and Michelle and, and uh, Connie Ellerman, the treasurer, and Michelle Phillips, the, the clerk, and Jack Lurie, the sheriff. We all of us, I think, have worked together on the sale, and we uh, uh, we'll be ready tomorrow for the sale of the so. Yeah, I, I, would, I would make a comment. I was just curious about what it looked like to, to, to register, to, 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 to purchase. So I went on the county website. I read all the details, which I think that if you're going to buy property at a tax sale, you should really understand all the things that can, that can happen and maybe even refer to an attorney uh, because I don't think it's just as simple as what one might think. I signed, I logged on, I signed, signed up, and within maybe a half hour, I got a, a notice that I had registered. So it was completely painless and it was simple. And I don't plan on buying anything, by the way. I just wanted to know how it was to register. So um, I would encourage everybody to do it, but the time's coming to an end, as Pat says. We should get it done today or, or, or tomorrow at the latest. Light so. um, but I would make sure, after reading the details of what I should be aware of, the details are important in this transaction. They, they certainly are. And after every sale, we always have somebody that um, complains that they didn't understand something about that process. And, Highlights are set forth in the list of instructions or uh, issues that we have 
available for people to read, but if they don't want to read them, they bid at their own risk. Exactly. So, and then, like, for example, the 2021 taxes have to be paid for the year, even if you buy it in April. So, right. You know, so, they're just little things like that that you don't maybe think about. Right. Absolutely. Hey, Pat, thanks for doing that. Thanks to Connie, Michelle, the courts, whoever is involved with this. It's a year plus process. It takes a lot of time. Um, okay. Any need for executive sessions? Um, public comment. Anybody have a public comment? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion. I, I have one more thing. Yeah. I just wanted to just make sure. Are we good to do our department heads of Kim and Stacy at one meeting on May 17th at 6 p.m. at the event center? I'd like to have a discussion about the interlocal agreement okay. prior to that. Because they're planning. They have personal lives and schedules, and they want to put it on their calendar. The city commission approved yesterday. They're good for it. Are we good for it to allow them to have one presentation instead of having to go two different places? It's they're just presenting their budget. It's and no, that's going to be it. Yes, it's just just budget presentation like they would do. I think we should have a some kind of agreement, another local agreement before we have this discussion. That could be prior to. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> Like, so they're prepared, they're literally preparing their budgets now. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to change. It's just going to save them time from going to places to have one place, one time to come present to us. I would probably want the budget presented to me here. Six places. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Six places. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. So I, I would like, I'd like to have, I would still want them to present to us here at the county commission meeting. I would be good with going to, because the third class cities and the city of Atchison would all be there. I'll, I'll go to that. I'm fine. I want them to have a streamlined process where they can present and explain. And then we would approve here by ourselves, like at our own. Well, I'd like to have a uh, interlocal agreement in place. So, we, if any so if we don't have any interlocal agreement in place by budget time, are we just not approving their budgets? I just want to give them some direction as department heads. No, eventually we'll have to approve every budget. The question is, the resolution calls for joint communications and solid waste done by uh, a lot of different things that you've been working on in those cases to try to improve them. But one of the number seven says that we should have an interlocal agreement on sharing the costs. And we have not had that for a substantial amount of time, which has meant that the city of the county of Atchison has bared the extra cost of not having a little local agreement. And I think sometime or other, we have a meeting and we have that there's a 10,000 pound gorilla sitting in the room. <laughs> I like to remove the 10,000 pound gorilla before we get there. Or we could have an L in a local agreement. But you, are you wanting the the uh, discussion to happen before that meeting, or that being part of that meeting? Well, it doesn't matter if it's on the agenda. I like to be first. I don't know whether the city would be willing to those. The city of Atchison would be willing to that. To do that. Well, after Jack asked that this morning, I emailed Becky Berger and put Pat and Michelle on here to ask her. And she said, she responded a special meeting prior to the 17th question mark. So that's what I don't, I don't know what you're looking for. I'm just trying to make it easier on Kim and Stacy to have one place to go. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the meeting as long as we have, we talk about the local agreement. I think we need to talk about that before we decide what, how we're going to spend the money we don't have as much money to spend. It's a different budgeting process. And I don't know if our people in these two departments will be prepared or they don't know how much money we've got to allocate to it. Uh, couldn't we 
see if the city was be, and I don't care whether it would be a special meeting before or part of that same meeting, discuss it and see if they are willing to do that because, uh, and then I'd be willing to go forward with it. Yeah, I think that's the key. That's the key. Is so the do you want to have that before the 17th? Yeah, they could come up here next Tuesday and have a conversation. With them. So they, okay, so next Tuesday? Well, I mean, I'm not saying that that's you next Tuesday. You don't, yeah, I know what you're saying. It, that'd be an option, is what yeah. you're saying. I'm saying that I, I want to, I just think we've got to have a conversation about it eventually. Okay. And uh, we're going to have to have that conversation sooner than later. So. Yeah. And yeah. with them, most of them, I think, work during the day. So we'd have to do an evening, probably. No, we can just do it with the city management. Oh, with just her, not the commission? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think, well, I, think work. I think the city management is the key to this thing. Yeah. Okay, so are we, we're good to tell, are we good for the 17th? I think we have, PM? I think we have three choices. One, have it, is it the 17th? Have a meeting on the 17th that includes talking about the interlocal agreement and, and or having a meeting about the interlocal agreement before uh, one of those two things. I, I said three, but there's two. Or not having it at all. Well, right. and I think maybe the 17th would be a good choice just because the third class cities would be be there also. And that would be the full city commission too. All right. Yeah. So that would probably be my number one choice, but now if they're not, if that isn't palatable i would then we'll would pick a different date but stay with letting the department heads know they're good for this presentation well, date yeah this seems like this would be a great public meeting for all us to talk about the funding of this program yeah, yeah. so i just think it needs to be on the agenda at the beginning of the meeting and is the city going to conduct this meeting or the county going to conduct this meeting probably the county since all the third class cities will be there too right yeah well, generally we've switched off in the last name of the county. So, but either way, I just I think we got to know that up front. Okay, so May seventeenth at six p.m. You want the agenda at the beginning to be discussion for the interlocal agreement. Now, Stacy and Kim will already have their budgets to present to us. So, should we let them go? Well, we don't have the money. How are they going to present a budget? So how are they creating their budget without <laughs> knowing where they're going? Yeah. yeah, you got to know where you're going on vacation to be able to Well, I just, I mean. Yeah, I know what you're saying. They've been creating budgets every year for the past how many years? I mean, I just, I don't want them wasting their time. We mm -hmm. got to give them some direction. Yeah. Well, just for an example, we've been putting money into the capital improvement plan. Or I, I'm talking about more specifically about joint communication, but we're also doing that in the, in the solid waste plan. And we put money in there every year, and I think we should. I think that's a good way to manage public policy. The problem is, is we're not we're putting in we're putting in more than our fair share of the money, and so we're funding something 20, 10 years in the future. For rate of replacements in 2025 without a shared, <laughs> see, we're not shared there. So uh, it seems like to me that we ought to share those costs, if it, especially if it's called co. Right. And when the, the taxpayers voted for this in 1993, and the only problem is that there was a unilateral action by the city. To change it and not not a, not an agreement or unilateral action by the city not to pay us that money. So for happened the same year, by the way, as the, the agreement we have on joint communication. So it's happened the same year. So yeah. So for Kim and Stacy, they have budgets. I mean, they know what they need to operate for next year. So can we allow them to present first so they don't have to sit through all of that with us? Or do you give them the option. Well, I can it's, ask. Them. It's six of one half dozen. Okay. Well, I just we try because to put people at the beginning mm -hmm. that can go on about their business if they don't want to sit there during all of that. So, but we're good for May seventeenth at six p.m. Event center. Yeah. Okay. If, if if the agenda includes 
it, yeah, the interlocal agreement. Financing discussion. How is financed? Sounds good. I will let those two know that date and time. Anything else anybody has? The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn at 1.55 p.m. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Quinn, the second by Commissioner All. Discussion? All in favor, step up and say aye. 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 We are adjourned.